You know, when I look around at all the entrepreneurs who are grinding it out, spending 70 to 80 hours per week growing their business, you have to ask yourself the question, at what cost? Hi, my name is Tim Uchuk, and in this podcast, we're going to be exploring the tools, tactics, and strategies for crushing it and scaling your business without making the ultimate sacrifice of your time and freedom. Hey, what's up, everyone? Tim Uchuk here, coming to you from, uh, I just hopped off a ferry, actually. I was uh, in Vancouver for the day. I'm about an hour uh, away from getting back home and thought I would hop on here and record a quick uh, podcast for you. Um, so the purpose of the trip, by the way, was we uh, we ended up picking up uh, a used boat a couple months back. And the uh, the pain with that was that our minivan, <laughs> our minivan couldn't tow it didn't have the towing capacity and my, my Tesla couldn't tow it. So we have, uh, I've had to borrow my buddy's pickup when we wanted to take the boat out. So long story short, we had to trade in the uh, Odyssey uh, and we picked up an expedition and uh, I'm secretly pretty excited because I like this much better than a, a minivan between you and me. Uh, so I want to jump on here and the topic of today's episode is all around uh, our our ability as habit forming creatures as human beings to normalize our current state our current environment why that can be a trap and um, what you can do to overcome normalizing your your current environment so what what in the heck am i talking about well if you look around our environment and you know on your typical day there's a lot of distractions typically right and our world is is really set up for that especially nowadays where we've got all these channels, we've got social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all this stuff coming at us. And they're all channels. Remember in the in the olden days before the things such as social media existed, uh, we had like TV and radio. There were less channels for people to get our attention. Now there's there's exponentially more channels and advertisements and they're all set up to to distract us so that we can <laughs> so that we can uh, be distracted with advertisements and things that are throwing us off our game. And so this, if you are a business owner, is a bad thing. If you are normalizing being distracted on a regular basis and being reactive on a regular basis, because running and growing a successful business requires the opposite of that. Uh, running and growing a, a successful business requires delayed gratification, which is the opposite of instant gratification. And so we need our we need to be intentional around setting up our our environment to almost reward ourselves for working on things that don't give us that instant feedback, right? And and most of us we normalize that condition towards the instant gratification just because it's it's easier to do that. There's there's less friction. And so when you're when your phone is set up, you're getting pinged with notifications, your team members are trying to get a hold of you. Uh, you're, you're just getting distracted. People are running in and out of your office. You're fighting fires. You're solving problems. You're answering questions. All this stuff is just getting thrown at you. Now, obviously, the problem with that is you, you normalize that. That becomes your default condition. And your, your brain becomes hardwired to, to that pattern. It becomes a, a pattern. It becomes a habit. And if you want to break that, you need to disrupt the pattern And be intentional about that so that you can eventually hardwire your brain to work on the things that might be a little bit more uh, conducive to friction, might be a little bit more difficult. You know, think of those those not urgent but important things that are really going to move the needle for you in your business over the long run. And the best way I can define those types of activities are uh, I I use the analogy of of what are the things that you can do that would turn one into one thousand. For example, when you're uh, facing a problem from a team member, you're, you're solving that problem. Could be around a process, could be around helping out the customer, answering some sort of a question. What you want to do and develop and cultivate a habit around is digging to the root cause of whatever you know the source of that question or problem, frustration, challenge is. What is the root of it? Let's let's get down to the layers and to the root. And solve it in such a way that it goes away for good. We don't want to slap a Band-Aid on that. And oftentimes you might you might respond by saying, I'm just going to do this myself if you're fixing a problem. Because it's just going to take me five minutes. If I, if I had to put in the effort to you know, spend an hour or a couple hours 
to solve this at the root level, it's going to just take too much time. So I'm just going to solve it right now. And here's the thing about that. You, uh, you're giving your current self instant gratification, but you're doing a disservice to your future self because multiply this by every instance, they're just going to clone themselves in the future. If you do not solve these problems at the root level and you are doing your future self a disservice. So I, I use this analogy at home all the time where, you know, at the end of, a, of uh, cooking a meal, I like to clean up the kitchen like right away. In fact, I clean as I go. Why? Uh, I always pretend I used to, one of my earlier jobs when I was a teenager, I was a cook. And you always want to give a future gift to the next shift that's going to be starting in the kitchen. So you make, you reset the kitchen and you make things spick and span. And if you're taking on that next shift, you're giving yourself a future gift. If uh, somebody else is, you're giving, you're giving them that future gift, right? Versus having them clean up the mess. And if it's you, even, even worse, right? You're going to have to clean up the mess at some point. So why don't you reset and give yourself a future gift? in that way, right? So to, to, uh, to create this condition where you're, you're normalizing the harder path to a great future gift, or in other words, we're working on problems at the root level, so they go away for good, one and done, in which case you're solving, by solving it in this way, you're solving a thousand little problems that would otherwise rear their head further down the road, right? So that's what I mean when I say turning one into 1,000. And so here's the challenge is, is to solve things at the root level and to think at, at this level of depth. And, and by the way, when, when I look at a problem like this, most of the time when I put together, a, I'll, I'll put together like a hypothesis, I'll, I'll think to myself, has this been solved before? If so, where's the shortcut? And, and that, that could save me some time, right? And then I, I do the research or whatever, try to be resourceful about it. I get a hypothesis. I run an experiment to solve the problem and oftentimes it doesn't work. But here's the thing. We, we replace the, the word failing with learning. So you have your hypothesis, you plan it, you do it. And let's say it works 80%, but 20% doesn't work. Well, now we review, we, we, uh, we tweak that remaining 20% and we move the ball forward. Now, in the absence of that, when you do it yourself, you're just, you haven't solved the problem. You've, you've saved yourself, you know, in, uh, in the present moment some time, but uh, you're actually robbing yourself in the future of, of hours and hours and hours of work and stress and frustration, right? And so turning one into 1000 means solving things at the root level. So getting back to um, rewiring your brain, I wanna, I wanna tell a story in how I was able to cultivate this ability to work on things that are harder and actually start to enjoy things that are harder because I've, I've kind of tricked myself and Sometimes that, that's what it takes is playing these little games to set up uh, like a feedback loop to set up a condition where you're reinforcing this habit. That's that's what you want to have happen. You want to reinforce the habits that are desirable so that, uh, you know, you, you get a little uh, rush of endorphins and uh, it becomes over time the default, the default path for yourself. And so my story is... Um, when I trained for an Ironman triathlon, which is swim, bike, run, it was a 14-hour race. I had, to, I had to swim. I can't remember the exact uh, distances. It was in the, the south of France. It was in the high 90s, um, starting at like 5 in the morning. I had to swim about 2 to 3 miles. It took me an hour and 20 minutes. Then I had to bike. Uh, it was 180 kilometers, so straight up a mountain and down a mountain. It took me about 7 and a half hours. Then I had to run a full marathon which is what, 26.2 miles, how to do that, right? And how I was able to do that and even get through the grueling training because I had to train for 10 months to do this. And by the way, I'm not a, a natural athlete. I had, to, I had to condition myself to love the pain and to thank the pain because the pain was, was the signal that I was, I was moving forward towards my goal. When I was training, I knew that it's painful, but I'm, I'm kind of training my pain training my brain to deal with and accept that pain because it's a requirement to get to that end goal, which was, which was ultimately really, really satisfying to be able to get that, um, under my belt eventually. So, um, fast forward to actually being in the race. I remember, you know, this, I'm a terrible swimmer. It took me an hour and 20 minutes and 
I got like motion sickness from the rollers in the Mediterranean there and I was getting like dizzy and it was terrible. But uh, throughout that and throughout the bike, I remember going up like straight up a mountain, right, for, for three hours during, uh, you know, it was like high 90s, early one, uh, uh, low 100s, temperature wise, really hot. And uh, I started just repeatedly telling myself how, how great I felt. This is, this is amazing. I am so lucky and fortunate to be able to be biking in this beautiful area. Look at that. That tree is gorgeous. Man, I feel good. Boy, are, are my, am I lucky to have legs. And look what my legs are doing. My legs are getting me up this mountain. That's incredible. So I was, I was kind of um, amplifying my self-talk, right? The, the positive self-talk, not necessarily lying to myself, but really being intentional around reinforcing how, how great that moment was in the face of like nearly intolerable pain. It was, it was excruciating. I was, <laughs> at some points I was, uh, I would almost hallucinate because it was just like really pushing your exhaustion pushing that upper uh, threshold of, of your capabilities there. But the other thing that I really enjoyed about that experience, which I've carried into my, into my business, my professional life, is that I've learned to thank the pain. I've learned to thank that pain. And, and a, a great example is over the last six years, I'm not naturally a very technical person, but it's something that I wanted to, it's a capability that I wanted to cultivate because in my previous life, Having to outsource the ability to acquire customers in our business was, it was stressful for me because if you don't know how to fish, right, when's your next meal? You, it's kind of like, um, it's randomness, right? And you're now all of a sudden you're waiting for economic and the governmental conditions to dictate your fate and your future. And I wanted to take that away. I wanted to have, have things be within my control. So I've thrown my last uh, six years of my life into mastering marketing and advertising and paid ads and that world so that I could always know how to fish in in every one of my businesses. It was painful as heck because it's not my natural ability. But now over time, when I'm, when I'm learning things like that and, uh, you know, figuring out how to automate things to save time or figuring out how to, how to solve a problem at the root level. And oftentimes I'll throw hours or days into what would, otherwise look like a trivial problem. But I know when I do the calculation, if we if we multiply it by each workday um, per week, per month, per year, it adds up easily in, in many cases to tens, if not hundreds of hours each year, if I don't solve it at the root level. So it's painful, painful work. But because I've cultivated and normalized the ability to thank the pain, and, and by the way, I that's why it's so important if you're an entrepreneur to set up routines in your life so that you've got enough uh, battery power in your system to be able to, to endure this, this kind of work and, and, uh, and have that kind of grit. So for example, you know, when, when we teach our, our clients in our perfect week uh, coaching program about one of the first things we do is we look at the calendar and we engineer to make sure that you're getting your eight hours sleep. And that's the very first thing that we look at and we put it into the calendar every single day and we routinize it because if you, you know, if you're not getting your eight hours, you're not going to be able to show up. You're going to have, you know, 60, 70% battery power out of the gates. Other thing we do is we, we eliminate any uh, and all variables or decisions that are unnecessary throughout the day. Why? Because making decisions costs you calories and it doesn't matter the value of the decision, for example, what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, those consume the same amount of brain power as the important decisions, right? So we want to eliminate and remove all those, all those variables wherever, whenever possible through routine, right? And eliminate those decisions. For example, that's why I wear mostly black shirts. It's something I don't want to have to think about because I want to spare my brain power to focus on the things that are going to yield a higher bang for the buck higher ROI, right? And so first of all, you, you got to have the routine that's going to spare your and give you capacity to work on these hard things. But when you're working on the hard things, you know, it takes it takes time. It takes the ability to, to focus for a sustained period of time, right? Which is the opposite of instant gratification. And so you want to normalize what is potentially a painful environment, right? And be able to endure it. And, and I think that's one of the greatest gifts that I had from from doing that race was um, you know, over the course of 10 months, I really cultivated 
that ability to thank the pain, you know, as, as I was experiencing sitting on a bike for, you know, three hours and then going for a swim or a bike, um, terrible. It's, it's hard on the brain, hard on the muscles. And so you have to kind of overcome that with mindset and trick your brain. And eventually you cultivate that ability to thank the pain and realize that, uh, you're doing your future self a, a huge service, huge gift. So that, that, uh, difficult stuff in the moment, uh, think of that as a, as a future gift for future you, right. And it's going to pay in dividends. That's why it's all, it's often useful to, to go through the math and say, okay, this, this problem here, if, what if we can get this, this, make this problem go away? I'll give you a, a recent example as well. Our, uh, one of my, one of my sales uh, team members was spending two minutes for, uh, for sales call, um, doing some like data entry and stuff. Right. And so, you know, two minutes times, let's say six calls per day times five days per week. So we're looking at 25 to 30 on average times two minutes per month, do the math. And then per year, I mean, we're, it's, it's adding up to dozens of hours per year, which could otherwise be allocated to creating value. Right. And so we, we saved literally two minutes through an automation. We, we figured it out two minutes, but we, we, um, we solved a thousand problems by solving that one problem there. It was a little bit of uh, work. It took me a couple hours to figure it out, but we did it. Huge gift to, to both of us in the future, right? And so that's another example. Now, why is this stuff coming to mind? Well, <laughs> um, for those of you that saw, I, uh, I was mountain biking uh, yesterday. And um, I talked about this a couple weeks ago where I've, I've got this loop and, and I've been timing it. The analogy I gave a couple weeks ago was um, my, my mountain biking loop that I do. I've got a standard loop that I do. And so just like in your business, when you set standards without, without having a, a baseline to compare against you, improvement is not possible, right? So think about standards and processes in your business without a, without a standard or a process in place. How do you know if you're, you've improved something, right? So what I was talking about there um, was I've, I've been doing the same thing with this, with this bike route. Anyways, yesterday I, uh, I pushed it and I went, um, I was going as fast as I could, right? And I went around a corner and uh, I was leaning on one side, went around this big tree. My pedal was down on the side that I was leaning, which is a, a dumb move on my part. But anyways, um, it got caught in a root and I catapulted 10, 15 feet, flew through the air, lost my sunglasses, landed on my hip, and I am I can barely move today. So my um, feels like something's fractured. My my bones might be cracked, and I'm not very mobile here today. So I'm in a world of pain. But it it reminded me of this analogy of thanking the pain, right? Um, this was definitely avoidable, but uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> I'm I'm uh, reminded of the of the time where I was in this kind of pain on a regular basis training for that race. But thank the pain, overcome uh, you know normalizing the the instant gratification behaviors, which really aren't going to uh, bring you closer to your big goal. So hope that's helpful. I am uh, almost at our city limits here. I will check in with you guys soon. Hey, Tim Uchuk here. And real quick, if you enjoyed this podcast episode, if you could take a couple quick seconds to give it a rating, it would be very much appreciated. And secondly, if you're looking for more tools and strategies on how you can crush it in life and business, just head on over to bookwithtim.com where I've put together a free case study which shows you how to unlock unprecedented freedom today by using the two power levers. Just head on over to bookwithtim.com. Until next time, wishing you success and freedom in your business. Cheers.